It's good to have you in our Sunday School lesson for the 15th of September 2024 and our topic is Joseph and his brothers. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, O God, the fountain of all knowledge, our helper, our God. Precious Holy Spirit, we pray that you lead us. I bring myself before you and I confess that without you I can do nothing. Therefore, I release myself to you, God, for your help, for your leading, for your anointing. In the name of Jesus, and I pray for my brethren, everybody that will listen, everybody that will watch, Jehovah God, that you open our eyes of understanding, that you circumcise our ears and our hearts and minds, and that you give us the grace, Lord, to obey what you are teaching us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Joseph and his brothers. Let's take our first reading from Genesis chapter 45 verses 1 to 5. Genesis 45, 1 to 5. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh had it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve lives. Okay, Genesis 42 <clears throat> verses 21 and 22. Genesis 42, 21 and 22. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother. For we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. We would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, "Did not I speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy, and you would not listen? Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us." Make no mistakes about it when you bear grudge when you commit sin against somebody especially against your own blood brother there are consequences so what we're going to study today doesn't mean that every time you sin and do what you like sell somebody kidnap somebody, cheat somebody, that you can go scotch free No. There is a consequence for sin. But this one was different. The brothers repented We committed sin. We sold the boy. Maybe he has been killed long ago. Now his blood is after us. That is why we are suffering all these consequences. Little did they know what was ahead of them. But let us also look at the problem of unforgiveness, the sin of unforgiveness. Let's look at that first before we come back to our story. Let us have a look at Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 12 to 15. Matthew 6, 12 to 15. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. For, okay. Yeah, go on, go on. For if you forgive men their trespasses, 
your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay. Like we've said before, Joseph had been sold to Egypt. Potiphar bought him. He prospered in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar's wife wanted to commit adultery with Joseph. Joseph ran away. Ended up in prison from slavery to free uh, um, slave prisoner. But God, like we have seen in the last two weeks, God now lifted him up. When the time came and promoted him, and we said last week that whatever you're passing through, try and see the hand of God in it. Even if you don't, endure. If you can get out of that situation, yes. But whenever you find yourself, continue to obey your God. Continue to follow your God. You don't know whether that is your own way to the throne. Jacob and his 11 sons back in Canaan heard I missed hunger. Drought had been for two whole years. There was scarcity of food. There was no food. And Jacob said to his sons, why do we stay here and look at each other? Go to Egypt and buy us food. And then they went. And they met Joseph the first time. Of course, J Joseph recognized them. They went back home. They came back again. Now Joseph could no longer, after all the gimmick, he could no longer bear. I don't even know how he endured, how he slept when he saw his brothers, especially his own younger brother, Mot. Now the Bible says that when he could no longer continue to carry this, he disclosed to them, I am your brother whom you sold. That is where we see forgiveness displayed. Perfect forgiveness. Perfect forgiveness. With that in mind, Bible says, Jesus says, forgive others. In fact, Peter said, how many times? In another passage, Jesus says, seven, 70 times, seven times. That is how many times you forgive somebody in one single day. <laughs> Disciples say, oh God, this will pass also. But Jesus had said, when somebody offends you, forgive them. Because one of the reasons is that if you do not forgive them, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. I mean, that scripture scares me. Is very scary. It means from the time you have not forgiven somebody, every sin you have committed, you still carry it on your head. What if you should die and go and meet God and you have been a Christian and you have lived a pure life just because of one foolish person, just because of one foolish act of unforgiveness, you find yourself on the wrong side of the eternity. That wrong side is called hellfire. Wow. Even if it's because of that, even if it's because of that, my bro, Bible says you can be angry when it, when it is called for, but don't let your anger last all night till the next day. Try and settle it. Try and forgive because you don't know what's going to happen overnight. My brother, let us ask for grace. Why should you forgive? Let us look at 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. 1 John 3, 13 to 15. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. 
Again, he says, if you hate your brother, somebody does something wrong to you. And the Spirit of God is saying, forgive this person. And you refuse. That single act of unforgiveness will now continue to develop until it gets to hatred. The, Good morning, brother. Mm. You, you can't even look them in the eye. That has gone on to hatred. And Bible says when it gets to that, then you are classed by heaven as an unbeliever. And where unbelievers end, that is where you're going to end. My brother, it is not worth it. It doesn't matter what the person has committed against you. Look at Joseph. From age 17 till the age of 30, he spent his life going from prison, slavery to prison, and so on and so forth, for 13 whole years. And see, he was able to forgive his brethren. Let us see. Let us know how. Why? Let us also know that about forgiveness, when you forgive, you're not helping that person that you're forgiving. No. <laughs> you're helping yourself. You're doing yourself a huge favor. Somebody does something against you, wrongs you, and moves on. Sometimes the person may not even have realized what they did wrong. And they are going ahead, living their own life. They are free. It is you that is suffering the consequences. The guy is free. He may have died. God does not count whatever it is against him if he did not know. And that is what happens a lot of times. People offend you. They say the wrong thing. They do the wrong thing. But they don't even know they have done it. And you are bearing the grudge and killing yourself. Unforgiveness, anger, hatred, these emotions, anxiety, what they do when you feel anxious, for instance, fear, certain chemicals are released in the brain and those chemicals begin to make you react the way you react. Adrenaline, no adrenaline, a host of other chemicals. Therefore, when you are angry or when you do not forgive, science has linked it to a lot of physical illnesses. Should I say that again? You're bearing grudge. They have been linked to stress, incidences of stress, heart disease, high blood pressure, lowered immune system, anxiety, depression, and other health problems. You still think that forgiveness is unforgiveness, it's a small thing. No, it isn't. And when you forgive, those chemical reactions begin to reverse. Don't wait till your blood pressure is high and then you forgive just because you didn't forgive. When that happens, yes, you're forgiven. The chemical reactions are reversed, but the blood pressure might not come down. There is a testimony of a lady who was having a bleed. She was pregnant and she was having a miscarriage. She was beginning to bleed. And brethren went to pray for her. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and nothing happened. The contractions were still happening. The bleeding was still there. As they prayed, one person said, hey, excuse me, excuse me, I've had a word of knowledge. They said, yes. He said, God says, sister, there's somebody you bear grudge against. You have not forgiven that person. Please, can you tell us who it is so that God can answer our prayer? She said, no, I will not forgive him. Over my dead body. They said, what? And that's a, um, a phrase that people use over your dead body. Do you at all know what that means? He says, won't forgive. Who is this person? He says, my brother-in-law. He did this, he did that, he did that. Okay, your brother-in-law is not in hospital, miscarrying, bleeding. Can you forgive him? He said, no, no, no. Brother said, okay. 
We are not praying anymore. Until by God's grace said, okay, Lord, I am sorry. I forgive this person. They prayed and the bleeding stopped. There was a day, my wife and I were newly married. We're traveling and we went to Aba. I think we went to Enugu as well, as well from Ihechowa. And on our way back, you know, my newly married people, I don't know what happened. I can't even remember what we quarreled about. And I was driving head straight, face straight, not looking to my left because, is it left here to my right? Because she was sitting there. And we're going home now after Mwaya. Before Iberia Junction, the engine stopped running. I started it, it started again. And we moved a few poles. The engine stalled again. And thank God, there was a petrol station just at Iberia Junction. And we pulled in there and stopped. Opened the uh, bonnet, looked around. And I knew without being told that that car wasn't going to start that day and we're not going to take it home. I knew the second thing, that what had caused this problem was because of the quarrel between me and my wife. And the third thing I knew was that if we didn't settle, we would not get home that night. And of course, being a man, you know, men are very good at apologizing. I can't even remember what it was all about. And I said to her, hello, whatever, whoever is wrong, I'm sorry. And we said sorry to each other. And we prayed for each other. As we just finished, we left the car, locked it, came out. A bus was pass going to Abreba. That was the, the, the much we could do. We jumped into the bus, got to Abreba. As we were trying to knock on the gate, of one of our pastors there a car pulled up behind us and it was the pastor he was in a crusade busy doing the work of God and God said hey jump in the car go home and he said what am I going home for this is crusade that just started God said go home that's how he came and met us as we we're trying to knock on his gate he now gave us a lift to half here and then dropped us with a friend who gave us a car to get home to EHO. I can tell you, if we didn't forgive each other, we would have stayed, spent the night there. Praise God. Forgiveness. 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 Now, Joseph, what was it that helped Joseph to forgive his brethren? What was it that helped him? Somebody that had been so wrong for so many years. Let us have a look. Let us read Genesis 15 and in verse 13. Genesis 15 and in verse 13. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. Joseph knew that. That's number one. Joseph looked at the big picture. Joseph saw that, look, I am not in Egypt for no reason. But whether he knew that or not at that time, but it was fulfillment of prophecy. My brother, do you know that person that has offended you that you refuse to forgive may have been part of God's plan to get you to your destiny. Do you know that? Are you a Christian? Do you know that all things work together for good for them that love God? <laughs> I can tell you from my own experience, it is true. It is very, very true. All things. All things work together. You don't know where God is leading you. Forgive so that God will continue his work that he started on you. If we read Gen uh, Matthew 18, 23 to 35, we're not going to read that because it's a long passage. 
but this is a servant who was owing his master so much money and he couldn't pay. The master said, sell him. Sell him, sell all everything that he has, his children, his wives, and pay me my money. The servant knelt down and said, oh God, even if they sell me, I can't even pay this money. Even if they sell all of us, please forgive me. Give me time and I will pay. The master looked and he, even if I sold him, even if I let him go, how many years he walked, he wouldn't even pay. Mm, I forgive you, go. Jesus said that same servant went out and saw his servant who was owing him something about one over 1,000 of what the master had forgiven him. And he grabbed him on in the throat said, if you don't pay me, I'm going to kill you. And the Bible, he threw, Jesus said he threw him into prison. And the other servant said, wow, this man wicked do. Look at the huge amount that our master had to write off. And he cannot even forgive his... And they went and told the master. The master said, you wicked. I let you go with so much. My brother, when we don't forgive, we are like that servant. Jesus died on the cross. So that you and I could be forgiven. What is greater than life? He had to die. He had to go through the cruel cross. He had to go to hell and fight. He had to. That is why you and I are even Christians today. He forgave us so much. And he keeps forgiving us. When you know that. When I know that. When you remember. How much you've been forgiven. My brother. You will find grace. To forgive your fellow servant. You will find grace. Now, there were things when I was growing up, I tell you, apart from primary school, secondary school during the, uh, after the war, <laughs> I gained entrance to secondary school. I couldn't go for one year. Why? Because there was no money to pay. Finally, I went to secondary school and struggled most of it. Came out. By God's grace, I went to uni and roughed it out for another number of years. That is the kind of thing, especially when you knew you had people, uncles, that you thought could help you. But they didn't. That could sow hatred in you, unforgiving spirit. But bro, God has saved me. And it doesn't matter. I related to them as if they were the people. In fact, one or two of them was even say, telling people that ah, they trained me. All that behind. Because when I became an adult, when I became established, and I realized, I said, God, thank you very much. Thank you. Because if these people had done for me, what I had expected, if they had trained me as they are claiming, bro, I for no fee drink water, keep cup. Because they didn't do it. They didn't have the boldness to come and run my life. He gave me freedom to serve my God. He gave me freedom. If you when God have provided and I established a practice, a medical practice, nobody could run it. I ran it according to God's own command because nobody could lay a claim to having done this or done that or done that. Finally, what is it that helps me to forgive? My wife taught me, she started it. When somebody, when she's angry with somebody, she will say, God, call the person and say, I love you. Carlo, I love you. I forgive you. Carlo, I love you. You see, some of these things are easier said than done. When you struggle, during your prayer time, when you see that person and that anger wells up, call him in his presence, in his absence, and say, I love you. I for God, I forgive him. By the time you say that several times in the presence of God, that anger will go down. The grace to forgive will come. We have tried it so many times. 
and we know it works. We have tried it. Just try it. Just say to God, let your will be done. Give me the grace to forgive. And begin to say it because there is power in words. There is power in words. When you say it, you hear it yourself. It goes down and it changes things inside you. Something inside you. And you receive grace to be able to forgive. And it, people have forgiven people that killed their brother or their sister or their husbands because God gave them the grace. My brother, you don't want to suffer depression because of somebody else. You don't want to face God's anger after you have been a Christian all your life. And then you go and God says, get behind me, you cursed. And you're going there to suffer in hell with an unbeliever who you knew and who knew you say, what are you doing here? I think say on a day the other side, what are you doing here, please? That will not be fine. Again, as a reminder, look at Joseph remembered his dreams, how the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to him and he wept. So this dream has actually come true. Of course your dream will come true. Don't let anything stop your destiny just because you have not forgiven somebody. Let us pray. As we said before, Jesus has paid the price for your sin. Whether you have received it or not is a different thing. People are not going to end up in hell because they say no. People are going to end up in hell because they refused the forgiveness that Jesus has paid so dearly to get. If you're not sure that if you drop this minute, that you're going to heaven. You're not sure whether God has forgiven you, whether you have made peace with God. Please pray this prayer after me, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cruel cross for me. I am sorry for my sin. Forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel it from the book of death. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Give me the grace to follow you to the end. Has anybody offended me? I forgive him. Have I offended anybody? I am sorry. Give that person the grace to forgive me also. Thank you, Father. Every one of us, oh God, help us. Help pastor to forgive pastor. Help pastor to forgive member. Help member to forgive pastor. Member to forgive deacon. All of us, Jehovah God, will come before you. Give me the grace to forgive even, even unbelievers. Lord, thank you because you are God of grace. I receive your grace to forgive. Father, is there anybody sick among us? Anybody that is listening? Jehovah God, I pray. Heal such a person in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.